pretty fun. Today's the day we're, we're splitting up from our COVID quarantine crew. Sad day. Uh, Delos just took off, we're selling up them. A couple more boats are staying here, uh, making their way to the Bahamas chain in different routes. Uh, but we're overnighting for two nights to try to stage to go back up north to the States. We have a lot of miles to cover. Um, it's already mid-June and we're trying to make it all the way up to Maine or Canada. Uh, so we have to get moving so we have a little more of accelerated time frame than everybody else. Yeah, so um, we had a couple boats split off, but today is the major split. Because today we're heading off with Delos and Grace and Zinzi are staying here. Um, so, sad. We're not only leaving the Bahamas and don't know when we'll be back, but we're also leaving our friends, so. Here we go. Ready to say final goodbyes? Yeah, let's do a drive-by. In our last episode, we said goodbye to our beloved TTYC and sailed north, leaving the Ragged Islands and finishing an incredible chapter of our lives. On the way, we navigated an inlet where we encountered raging conditions with wind going against current. Today, we're saying our last goodbyes to the remaining members of our dear COVID crew as we officially part ways. We've just left the incredibly beautiful Flamingo Key with super clear turquoise water and pristine white sand beaches. It'll be our last time in the incredible Bahamian water and the last time we feel the Bahamas sand between our toes. For how long is anyone's guess. We'll remember these final hours in Flamingo Key and take those memories with us as we move forward and on to new destinations. Today that destination is the Berry Islands, sitting at the far northern part of the Bahamas, about 220 miles away. Once there, we'll be in a good position to jump offshore for the next journey, which will be an offshore passage to North Carolina. What you doing now? Uh, getting the pole, the downwind pole ready to go. It was just too chaotic with no pole out. Sails were collapsing and filling and rolling us. Um, the crew went about 15, so I start with the Genoa to be conservative instead of the code zero. Yeah, see how it goes. So 
when we're downwind sailing like this, um, the boat tends to do this roll thing that you can, I think, see pretty clearly on film where we're just going like this, and then like that side, and then going back to this side. Um, and we haven't quite yet found a sail configuration that eliminates that. I don't know that there is one. Um, I've talked to a lot of other sailors and it just seems like some component of a roll like this is just a fact of downwind sailing and I don't like that motion. Um, so I do feel pretty nauseous right now. Um, it could be worse. Our roll in our transatlantic was horrible coming from Spain to Caribbean. I mean, the bigger the waves are basically and the further apart they are just do this wider roll. But the wind is supposed to come down today as the day continues and that will bring down the waves and that will just lessen that whole effect of rolling. So this will be a two night passage, two overnights. So we get ourselves closer to a good jumping off point for a real offshore trip to the States, East Coast. I'm kind of getting used to the motion. We are wing on wing. Uh, wind is dead behind. <laughs> Tricky navigating through all these rocks again, one of those kind of passes. So I've been looking at all the chart data, um, trying to figure out what the best route is. Um, once we get up here to this is called the tongue of the ocean, the water goes from like 20 feet deep to thousands of feet deep. So once we get up here, it'll be easier. So you're at 3,000 feet deep. 26. Um, that's in about 40 miles, so I guess right before nightfall tonight we'll be hopefully in the deep water, and once we're in that deep water it'll be easy navigation, and we're gonna run in that for about 170 miles, I believe, so um, yeah, it's kind of sneaking our way through here today, but we have great light, um, decent winds, speeds are averaging in mid high fives, and uh, yeah, um, we're still tagging along with Delos. They're ahead of us up there. So we are so deep downwind right now. Um, I think we're going to switch out our code zero for our asymmetric. Um, just it's just too little wind right now, and the code zero wasn't happy going deep deep down. It was uh, losing shape. So we're going to try to go uh, head still pulled out and asymmetric. So we're just gonna have to pull down the code zero now. Um, but the furling line is underneath the jib, so we're gonna drop it this way so we get in the bag and out of the way. These light wind forecasts are really nice for the crew and first mate, but a lot of work for the captain. Um, it's gonna be our third sail change. We've been out here for like three hours, four hours. It's been a while since we flew our ASM. You still see Delos way in the distance. They're like 0.7 of a mile, I guess, last, last time we checked. So we're only going four knots right now, 4.5 knots. And that is why we are doing this. Yeah. Because Wind, parent wind is around 10 knots now? Less than that. Less than that, I think. Less than that. ASIM really can only be flown on sort of like a long cruising passage, longish, when the wind is light and definitely gonna stay light. If conditions stay light and the sail works out well, we're probably gonna wanna leave it up overnight. It's a two night passage and that's always Potentially a little risky to be ASIM, so things have to kind of really look right to do that, which looking right would mean 
high, high probability of wind staying very low. Uh, it can't be a squally looking evening. It's not an easy sail to just like take down in the dark. So. Gone, so it's gotta be oh, come on. It's funny, it seems a way to guarantee more wind is to put up a spinnaker. It was, it was in a six and seven range and now it's up to 11 as soon as we got the kite rigged. <laughs> yeah, I mean, now we're going like five, five. Now we're down to five, two. Hmm. So we're just debating right now whether to put this spinnaker out. Um, it is now eight and a half knots apparent. Just double checking the radar, looking for any potential spalls. We don't see anything. Cause like nine, 10 knots is like the limit. So it's not like we can't fly it. I think we just don't want to put it all out and then have to take it down, but it's back to eight knots. I know, seven, eight. We could try it. Cause if we get any more speed too, when the parent wind's gonna come down, like we could start going yeah, yeah. six knots. I vote we try it. <laughs> Well, let's snuff it a bit. I mean, we, we know how to snuff it a bunch of times. It's 10. Yeah, we're gonna try it. Here we go. Okay. One cool more. So I was back here pulling this line while Bill was um, uh, releasing the spinnaker on deck, the bow out of its suck. And then we took the main down because the main will steal the wind from the spinnaker. So we take that down. Now we're flying wing long wind with the spinnaker and the jib. Oh, also this. I had, a lot, I had the preventer on and the boom brake. Too hot. I just want to mess up its shape. It's hot and Bill also has a uh, bit of an injury right, oh, right now. He bruised his rib about a week ago, so. He's a little bit reluctant to trim sails like he normally does. Took us a few hours to kind of get the energy to want to do this. Now one o'clock, I think we left around nine, so normally we probably would have dealt with this a little earlier, but. So now what are we going? Six two. Six two? Yeah, so we're booging. I think the motion feels better. We have a little bit of a lean yeah, on. Yeah, it was too, we were wallowing too much. Dallas better watch out. <laughs> Come on, I'm fast. In addition to flying our code zero off the new bowsprit, we're also able to use it uh, for our ASIN. So it has a tack line run internally, which you can see the line here, and then it goes out all the way up there. So we're flying it way off the boat in nice clean air. I think the jib is actually like funneling air into the sail. It's kind of cool. But yeah, it's just flying way up high. We're going, we're so deep down wind. Wind is dead behind us, so we're keeping it way, everything loose and just flying out there. But uh, yeah, it feels good. The motion of the boat is steadied and I think it was a good choice. <laughs> so I guess Delos saw a hard sail plan and they're raising their wumper. Hey, what's up, man? Look at over there. Yeah, you guys are cruising. How fast are you going? Uh, about six, two, six knots. Man, I think we need just a few more knots of breeze to keep up with you. Just radio us and they ran the ground. But only a little bit to our port, so have me a little bit on alert. Um, when they ran the ground, we were in 20 feet of water, so there seemed to be like a vein of sand. Um, I could kind of see like over there, it looks to be like a sand bank. I'm not sure if the camera could see 
the color difference. But the problem is we're losing light, and we have about another six miles. We're in the tongue of the ocean, deep water, so gotta be careful now. What you got there? The little uh, Mexican pizza we're doing for dinner tonight. It's a real easy meal to make. It's nice offshore. The conditions are pretty gentle, so. It'll make a little more of a serious meal than uh, like a one pot wonder. Yeah, there's some chicken in there, some canned chicken, with black beans, and um, olives, mushrooms, onions, peppers, little tomato sauce. It's pretty good. About to fall off the edge of the planet, huh? I'm really looking forward to the dead counter going off for the first time in what, like three months now? I just hit 40 meters. Yeah, we're 53 feet. Here we go, going down. That's Delos out there. They're slightly ahead of us. And Brian just radioed to say that we're approaching the edge of the world because we're going to go from we're in like five feet of water right now or something. It goes down like 4,000 or something. 10 feet and it goes down to 4,000 feet. Yeah, I totally see what you're talking about now. I can see behind you. You can see where the shallows are versus the thick, deep blue water. Pretty cool. Yeah, it's pretty trippy, huh? You can even see like the wave pattern change. Like it's like choppy on the bank and you know, it goes more like a rolling swell out here. See, like, you see the line? You see the line in the water right there? Yeah. And you see the shallow blue and it's like, and you see the white caps? And out here it's just like more rolly. It's cool. Oh, that sound went off. And we just dropped our duck sounder, so we're in over 400 feet of water now. Sweet man. Oh, we made it with light too. I'm glad about that. We made it through that little shallow section. That's good. So we just raised the main. We shifted our course about 30 degrees upwind, so we're doing about 120. Um, so I'm just I'm going to reshape this height. See how it's starting to up a little bit. I need to bring down this pack line. this for laziness. What do you do? Oh, this is the back line. This. I gotta bring it further down because we're going more upwind. See? I don't have a winch up here, but I do have a windlet. The captain. Pretty fun. Up the better shape. That, what that is doing is, um, if I'm bringing it closer to the pole, it's actually moving the front of the sail forward and out of the shadow of the mainsail more. And as you're heading more upwind, you want to have uh, the tack down to the better shape. Well, we're doing 5.4 and 6.3 apparent at an angle of 127, so, um, yeah, that's pretty good. That's pretty good, yeah. T true wind's only 10, so it's pretty light air. Um, seas have come down pretty well, too. Huh? Minus the heat, this is pretty blissful. Cannot really ask for much more. So, yeah. We're gonna do this for 30, 42 miles, then we can turn even more upwind, like another and a 15 degree turn, take us up to like Nassau. And then from there, I guess we'll figure out how to get across the berries to the Grand Bahama. Sweet. Making progress. Mm, just got a blanket. it. It is 
not much of a sunset tonight, but I don't mind at all because this is such an incredible passage so far. It's just so calm and still. Um, so yeah, but it, and it's a beautiful night. When you're so hot all day and then it gets cool like this when the sun goes down, it just feels so good. Um, yeah, so I'm officially on watch and Bill has uh, laid down to rest. I don't think he's asleep, but it's still early. It's only eight o'clock, um, but it's been a long two days saying goodbye to everybody. Um, he's pretty tired, so. Yeah, I'm gonna take the first watch and I'm gonna edit now and then maybe eat, uh, read, watch a movie. I'll see what I feel like doing later. Um, it should be a really easy, um, an easy watch. I have only a couple things sort of to look out for, but there's like nothing really in the way. Um, so, yeah, should be nice. It's a really peaceful evening. And I'm just gonna let Bull sleep as long as he can, and I'll just stay awake for as long as I can. I can already feel myself kind of getting more alert as the evening wears on, so I'll probably be up for a while. It's really hot. It's like 90 degrees outside, 90 degrees inside. I guess the other negative about light wind, and I hate to say the word negative, just because the alternative is so awful, but the other negative of light wind is that it's hotter because we don't have as much breeze, so. You can't have everything on a passage. I have yet to make a passage, no matter how good a passage is that is perfect. That's just sailing or cruising, cruising sailing quarter seven now, light winds, and this would be like a fantastic friggin' passage if it was so hot. It's like 100 degrees downstairs right now. Like, it's really bad. I just put water on my head. I don't know, honey. No. 